Now we're able to manage diabetes quite effectively in the short term with insulin in type 1 diabetes, diet, exercise, oral hypoglycemics and then insulin in type 2 diabetes. So what this means is it's not like pre-insulin when insulin wasn't available when patients would die straight away with type 1 diabetes but we can keep them alive for very long periods of time thankfully. But even though they don't die of the acute complications of diabetes, they are risk, at risk of developing the longer term complications of diabetes. And we need to know what the risk factors are for development of the longer term complications of diabetes so we can account for it. And one is the duration of diabetes, how long the patient has been diabetic for, and the age of onset. So the risk factors here are the longer someone has been diabetic for, the more likely it is, the more time they have had to develop long-term complications. And also, people that are diagnosed with diabetes at a younger age are more likely to get long-term complications, unfortunately sometimes in relatively young or mid-adult life. But those two factors aren't really surprising. Now, the degree of control is a major prognostic factor. If blood sugar levels can be maintained at low or near normal levels, then the long-term complications of diabetes are going to be delayed or hopefully avoided altogether. So high glycolated or glycosylated haemoglobin, the HbA1c test, the higher it is for longer, the more likely it is that patients are going to develop the long-term complications. And these are the two risk factors. How high is the blood sugar for how long? They're the risk factors for the development of the long-term complications. So keeping the blood sugar down to relatively lower levels is going to improve the prognosis. And then hypertension is another significant risk factor for many complications of diabetes, like the macrovascular disease like the diabetic nephropathy, the damage to the kidneys. And we need to bring the blood pressure back down, really, to have it as low as we can, as long as the patient's not getting hypotensive symptoms. We want to keep the blood pressure low. And the first line order of drugs to do that is the angiotensin-converting enzyme inhibitors. And these are particularly good for diabetics because as well as keeping blood pressure down, they're also, also renal protective. They protect the kidneys as well. And we need to monitor for microalbuminuria because microalbuminuria is a marker for, it makes heart disease more likely in the future. It makes renal failure more likely in the future. So microalbuminuria is the low doses of albumin that can be excreted into the urine from the leaky kidneys that allow the microalbuminuria because normally of course there should be no albumin protein at all in the in the urine. Now another risk factor for long-term complications especially the macrovascular ones is dyslipidemia. What we want is a fairly high HDL and a fairly low LDL. So if someone's dyslipidemic if the HDL is too low or the LDL is too high. And the main risk factor there is probably the high LDL. Unfortunately, we can bring LDL cholesterol down effectively with statins. And statins should be used fairly liberally, again, in diabetes to bring the LDL cholesterol down. Obesity is another obvious risk factor. Diabetics should not become obese. And smoking is an absolute contraindication in diabetes because the diabetes amplifies all the other risk factors for cardiovascular disease. So the hypertension, the smoking, all these things are amplified by diabetes. So if a diabetic smokes, it's much worse for them in terms of vascular disease outcome than it is for someone who's not a diabetic. So that's an absolute contraindication. So there's a few things there that we can actually look out for and we can manage 
meaning that the long-term complications in diabetes can be prevented or certainly at least delayed, hopefully delayed for many decades.